Hey, hey. Right, there we go. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. Hello. I'll just start in my share and then we'll jump right on in. Happy hump day, y'all. Hello, hello. All right. I'm excited to get started with y'all. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to High Performance at High Noon. Oh, I was supposed to have this on, but it was bright. Is that better? A little bit. It was bright. I turned it off for a moment. What's up, y'all? Welcome to High Performance at High Noon. I am Jice Johnson. I am a work-life integration strategist. It's rolling off my tongue better, y'all. Every week is getting better. So thank you for joining my midweek call. Um, as you know, if you don't know, I started this call um, because I kept getting asked, how do you do it? And as I keep saying, with a lot of grace and work-life integration. And so I love taking these calls and taking this time to um, really, really give you guys like some of the, you know, life lessons that I've learned and and um, my experience and also, you know, hear from you and your experience. Um, so this call is every Wednesday at noon Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. Pacific. So I'm excited to talk about this because this came to me like in the middle of the week. I was listening to, I don't even know who I was listening to, but I was listening to somebody, you know, you ever just listen to somebody who just don't get it? Like you'd be like, you somewhere in here, you've missed the point, right? And that's why I felt like I was listening to somebody who just didn't get it, who just was missing the point of like recounting a story that they heard, but not really understanding like the underlying characteristics. And I was like, you know what you need to have? You need to have some pillow talk with yourself. You need to have some one-on-one -on -one talk with yourself to help you really understand like where you are sitting. So this week's topic is called pillow talk because I feel like that's what we need to have. But really it's about self-awareness and it's about introspection. So I want to talk a little bit about self awareness because it is critical to your success critical how are you thinking um how are you feeling how are you behaving but also the why like have you ever had that like a situation and you'd be like why did I do that why did I do that that is a part of this conversation is like that aspect of not just what you're thinking not just what you're feeling, not just how you behave, how you have behaved or how you are behaving, but why, why am I doing this good or bad? Because introspection really goes both ways. It's not just when you feel like you're not doing what you want to do. It is also when you are doing what you want to do. And like, what are the motivations, right? Because when people see that you're seeing some success, they want to know, how are you doing it? Why are you doing it? And having that answer, you know, ready or knowing for yourself, um, 
is, you know, again, that, that kind of space that's like critical to success. What's the motivation that is causing you to behave in this way that you're really seeing some success. And that's important because at some point when you hit one of them hiccups and all of a sudden you ain't acting the way that you want to, like being able to go back and remember your why, or being able to go back and remember the behavior, how you were feeling, what you were doing and why you were doing is so important. So in this call, it's like the first goal is to assess. And then the second goal is to make adjustments when and where necessary. But that first goal is really about the self-assessment piece. And in that space is really, really never about criticizing yourself, right? And we talked about this before when we talked about that, like that space of like negative self-talk, right? So this isn't that. This isn't like the space where you come in and you are criticizing yourself because you haven't shown up the way you want to, or you're criticizing yourself because you've behaved some way that is making your own mind blown. Like, I don't know why I did that. This is really about, again, assessment and then making adjustments as you need to. And the framing of that is important. So how you talk to yourself through um, the you know, opportunities for improvement is really important. So there are four areas of introspection that we're going to go over today. And then, of course, I'm going to open it up for some Q&A and some feedback. So the first place of, around introspection that I want to touch on is that introspection helps you manage yourself. It helps you manage yourself because oftentimes when we are in a situation or an interaction, it is about what's happening out there. It's about what somebody else did. It's about how somebody else contributed to the situation when really you have to spend time managing yourself in that space. And so it is really the key to battling unfavorable situations. So I'm going to share this story. So Azaria, my oldest daughter, was in, I believe this was um, first grade the school that I'm thinking about was in first grade. So she's in first grade and they have a bus that comes to pick up the kids and take them back to their homes. And also they have the parent pickup line, right? Where the parents come and get their kids. And then they have the after school care. So these are like the three options after school. You are either on the bus, you are waiting for your parents or you are going to the after school care, okay? I pull up because my kid is not actually signed up for the bus. So I pull up. And they don't have my kid. My kid is not in after school. She is not in the parent pickup line. So they think they have put her on the bus. I am concerned because we're not signed up for the bus. She don't know where to get off. Like none of this is a thing for our family. So they think this is the case. They are trying to get in touch with the bus driver. They're trying to radio. And in the meantime, I'm saying, okay, well, based off the time, that bus is almost to the house. So I'm trying to turn back around. Go, I leave the school. I go all the way back to my house. I'm trying to stay calm. Like she's on the bus. It's fine. When a bus pulls up, I'm going to poke my head in. I get there. The bus is just pulling up. I poke my head in. My kid is not on the bus. So I run back to the school. She is not in after school care. She clearly was not on the bus. Now I'm really panicked, right? I have to take a deep breath. I had to manage myself because in that moment, first of all, I went to punch that teacher in the face. She was like, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, bitch, I don't know. Okay. But I had to try and keep calm because all I could think about was if my daughter is missing somewhere and I start panicking, how am I going to think clearly to help me navigate through whatever my next steps, whatever my next moves are? I'm trying to understand like what the system is. I mean, my, this is my oldest daughter. This is only her second year in school, right? So it's not like we know the school system well in that way. And I'm trying to figure out what it is that I need to do. So I'm having a conversation with the principal, with the teacher. We're trying to assess what we need to do because we have a lost kid. And next thing I know, here comes my daughter walking calmly up the street. Why is she walking up the street? Nobody knows. But what probably happened was she thought that she was supposed to go somewhere she wasn't supposed to go. So she wandered off is really what happened. But in that moment, in that time and space, I had to bring myself together because as a mom who is missing their child, you are about right, like you're angry, upset, scared, frustrated, like all these you know emotions are coming in. And once we had her, the teacher who at this point is like red in the face, tears come down, like she's upset because she don't like, she knows she messed up. She don't know what, what, what happened. Right. And she was like, you just stayed so calm. And I told her, I said, well, I felt like I had to stay calm 
because I need to think clearly as to how to find my daughter. So that place where introspection can help you manage yourself is important in particular when you are facing like these unfavorable situations, that is the space in which it matters the most for you to be able to pull in, think about how you're thinking, how you're feeling, how you're behaving, right? In those moments. And so, you know, I have another, um, you know, concept around that, which was happening in Iraq. So, uh, you know, I went into the military and we went to Iraq. So I went in right after 9-11, I went in 2002. So, right, of course, 9-11 happened 2001. I go into the military in 2002. So I know I'm going to war because I, I mean, it's 2002. Everyone is going to war, right? So I know that I'm headed there. One of the things that was very interesting to me in that space was that um, there were people who had started to like literally lose their hair in Iraq. Like it was such a stressful time for them in their life. And I remember um, someone asking me like, you don't really seem that stressed. And that was because I had been sitting with myself each night, like kind of reminding myself, this is not where your story ends. So every day you got to get up and you've got to, you know, think and feel and behave like this is not the end for you, where there were people who were only thinking about the worst case scenarios. And it literally showed in every facet of their life. I mean, their hair was falling out. They were having like, I mean, you think that some of the soldiers had it bad when they got back. There were soldiers that had it bad while they were on the ground. And we weren't even in a, like we were in a logistical base so we weren't even like experiencing like direct combat but people were thinking about the worst case scenarios and they struggled to manage themselves and so these are like some extreme experiences but they're my experiences nonetheless right so like think about that time or that space when you need to manage yourself and how you show up in that space so introspection helps you to manage yourself the second thing that introspection does is it helps you to examine your values. And why that's important is because your decisions are based on your values. When your values are not clear, it gets difficult to navigate your decision-making process. So you find yourself in these situations or in these spaces where you think that you, you know, you get presented with an opportunity or an option, and it's not clear about what you should do. To me, when I see that, it means you're not clear on your goals or you're not clear on your values or both. And so really being in a key space to be to help you examine what your values are, that takes a lot of introspection. What matters to me? Because the world will tell you a lot of stuff that is supposed to matter to you. But the real the, the reality of your life is your decisions are based on what is important to you in that time and what is important to you as a person. So that time, meaning your goals and then who you are, meaning your values. So it's very important for you to sit and, and sit with that and know what those are. When I'm faced with a lot with decisions, it's rarely difficult for me to make a decision about what I want to do, where I want to go, who I want to spend time with, who I'm going to work with, who I'm not going to work with, to what extent I'm going to work with them. Because in a lot, you know, for me, I do a lot of community work. It doesn't mean that I don't have to. I mean, it, a, a lot of times I have to work with somebody that I might be in not alignment with in their values or my values. But it doesn't mean that I don't work with them. It means that I get to monitor how I work with them because I'm already aware that our values are misaligned. So that allows me to show up in my most authentic way and also to stand firm on what it is that I believe and how far we can go in this compromise. This compromise has to still fall in the, in the space of where my values align. So introspection helps you examine your values. The third thing it does is it helps you with clarity. So when we talk about like how you integrate your work and your life and create this holistic synergistic uh, space that you can do what you love make the money you want to make and um, and really accomplish your goals, that comes through a space of clarity. Well, one of the first things that people don't do is spend time getting clear. Like when I sit down with a client, one of the first things we do is spend a lot of time getting clear because people will say like, yes, this is what I want to do. And they're like, well, actually, like you got to work through all of that. So this isn't like a, a, a one-time sit down and you're going to automatically be clear. It is a time that you have to process and ask yourself, you know, going all the way back to one of our first conversations, what expectations do you need to release? What goals do you really want to have? What is your version of success? How do you really want to live your life? I just had a conversation this morning with a girlfriend of mine who is like, mm, all that travel, that's not my life. I can go back. I have journals. I got journal upon journal upon journal. I got 10 of them. 
I can go back for years. The whole purpose of me joining the military, not, let me not say the whole purpose. Part of the purpose was my viewpoint at that time. But a big part of me joining the military, like one of the things that excited me the most was the travel. In the military, you get a four-day weekend every single month and you get to jump on a plane and go a whole lot of places. I wanted to get stationed in Europe because in Europe in a four-day weekend, I'm about to be in Rome. I'm about to be in London. I'm about to go visit Spain. I'm about to be out. Like all I could think about for my whole life is all the places that I want to go see and all the places I want to travel. But the reality is that's not everybody's life. Some people don't have that type of um, curiosity about the world or desire to go and see. It feels like a lot to go through the airport. They don't like security. I mean, a whole lot of things that make that that not their life, right? So it can't be about what somebody else's life is about. It has to really be dialed into what your life is about for you. And that requires clarity. And that's a space where introspection comes into play. It is literally like keeping it real in its greatest form. And so... The fourth area of introspection is around personal development. In what areas do you need to grow? So I talked about, I did this little short reel because again, like I said, part of my reason for even coming up with this topic for this week was around the, you know, these conversations that just are not based in the reality of like the underlying principles of what somebody is going through. So you see somebody's success, like I, I use Tyler Perry as an example all the time because Tyler Perry talks about the times that he slept in his car. So now when you see him as the billionaire, the question is how many people are willing to have enough grit and perseverance and dedication to a thing they really believe in to sleep in their car? And there's a whole lot of nuances in there. Tyler Perry ain't had no kids and he was a single man by himself and all those things. I get that. So I'm not saying for people to put themselves in a detriment of situations, but I think it's important to acknowledge that there is a man who is a billionaire who has a fucking landing pad in his, you know, up to his house, right? And he used to sleep in his car to produce Medea. Like that's what he produced was, you know, these, these plays that he felt so passionate about that we now see the, 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 um, the fruits of, but we don't understand the underlying personal development and characteristics that it took in order for him to get there. And so that's things like having grit, having discipline, being creative, really working on your levels of communication, um, leadership. And it's, and it's levels to this. I just had lunch yesterday with a woman who leads 10 teams and I'm like, help please. Cause I'm struggling to lead one team and my area of leadership in that space is weak. But if I can't acknowledge that my air, that that is a weakness for me, then how do I develop in that space? If I feel like I got to get on here and act like everywhere, every area of my life is perfect. It's not. That's why I tell y'all the stories because it's not. So I had lunch with someone who leads 10 teams effectively. And I said, teach me, master. <laughs> like, help me learn what it is that you do in order to manage all these teams. Because I have a vision for like where I'm going. And in my vision, I need to be able to manage teams far more effectively than I do today. But I have to be honest with myself about that. Um, do you need to grow in your integrity? Do you do what you say you're going to do? Do you do when you say you're going to do it? Do Are you doing the right thing? Are you doing the right thing when ain't nobody looking? Do you have perseverance, adaptability, willpower, emotional intelligence, self-control? Listen, on the self-control too, okay? Wait a minute. First, there was somebody who cut me. It cut deep. They were like, it, why would I... <laughs> They, they were basically, it was, it was rude, but I could understand what they were talking about. I didn't like how they said it, but I could understand what they were talking about. They were saying that they don't follow people who don't have them, like their physical bodies together. Right. And I said, well, that's interesting. And they said, why would I follow somebody who doesn't even have enough discipline to not put something that they shouldn't eat in their mouth? And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I got a lot of work because them nachos I just killed the other day. Let me tell you, they was good. Um, no, like I have a lot of work. It's bad. I mean, and I've always, like I have been, I grew up like being a thin girl, right? Like my mom and sister got nice little hourglass shapes, Kate, Jice, straight and narrow. I ain't never had no ass. I ain't never had no hips. None of that. I was always straight and narrow. So now I'm like, maybe like 30 pounds now over the weight that I feel like I should be. And 
I ain't never had to watch what I eat. Now I got to watch what I eat. It's not easy. I fail regularly at it. But when he said that, it cut deep. Like, oh yeah, because it's not just about the eating, but it's about the ability to control yourself. I want this. It's not good for me. Do I have enough self-control to turn it away? I know I'm not going to starve if I don't eat them nachos. Y'all know, can y'all hear the theme of what one of my favorite foods are? Like, I know I'm not going to starve, but that's difficult for me, right? And so like, where do you sit in that space? Where do you sit in the space of accountability? So this area of personal development is the fourth area of introspection. So you have to really bake introspection. You have to bake time for introspection inside of like your regular routine because it is a part in which in where you need to sit with yourself. And that's why I called it pillow talk because it really is a conversation between you and you. It's not about judgment. It's not about right. It's not about wrong. It's about assessing what's happening with you in your life. And then if you like where you are, what is contributing to that? If you don't like where you are, what is contributing to that? And most importantly, what are you contributing to that? Because you have the ability to adjust and change for yourself. So there's a couple of ways that you can really work on that introspection because it's going to continue to develop as you develop yourself. And with each new phase of life, you're gonna be in a new level and a new space of introspection. And so that's why it has to just be baked into a part of your routine is to look inward at what you have going on. So you can practice mindfulness, journaling, meditation, truly self-monitoring, like in the moment, right? That was that story with my daughter, like in the moment, I am in the moment and I need to pull myself together so that I can think clearly, right? So like that's that space of self-monitoring. And then also asking yourself tough questions, like really asking yourself, why is a tough question? Why on any level? Why am I doing this? Why am I frustrated right now? Why did I snap on her? Why did I do these things, right? Like why is a tough question? But there are other tough questions that will come up in the space of something. You know, right now I'm in this space of like intentional dating, and so I've had a couple conversations because I think I might have met somebody, maybe kind of sort of, we'll see how it pan out. But in that space, like he asked me some tough questions that made me have to go back and really sit with myself. Like, well, why, why did I do that? Why did I say that? And I'll give you one example. <laughs> it was crazy. I sent him a selfie. It wasn't no crazy selfie, y'all. It was just a regular, I was clothed. I was, I was just cute. Okay. I sent him a selfie. He didn't respond at all. So later on, I was like, did you get my picture? He was like, yeah, I got it. And I was like, well, you didn't say nothing. And his question was, was the picture for me or for you? And I was like, oh, I was like, well, it's for you. And he said, oh, well, I did what I wanted to do with it. I was like, well, what'd you do? He was like, I saved it to my phone. He was like, yeah, it was nice. And I was like, but you didn't say nothing. He was like, is it for me or for you? And I was like, no, it's, it's for you. Wait, it's for me. No, I mean, he was like, well, do you need validation? And he was, I mean, he was very serious. He was like, if you need validation, he was like, I will tell you, I thought the picture was beautiful. And he was like, but you should like ask yourself, is, is the picture for you or for me? Because if it's for me, I did what I want to do with it. If it's for you, he was like, tell me what you need in that space. He was very serious. And I was like, oh, shoot. That's a tough, like, because why do we send selfies? Is it for the person or is it for the self-validation? I thought that was a real question. But in that space, those tough questions can really help you assess what it is that you are doing and why you're doing it. Did I send it because I wanted him to have a picture of me? Did I send it because I wanted him to compliment me? Because so I was like, well, I kind of think you should compliment me, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and he was like, and his response was, okay, cool. I'll respond appropriately next time. Like, but that made me think like, so wait a minute, do I have to tell you? I mean, it, it was, I mean, we had a deep conversation about it. 
about like esteem, about, you know, what is the purpose of something, right? And so, and it doesn't necessarily change like anything that I do. I sent him another selfie. But in the but in the meantime, it did make me think about the purpose of what my actions were, right? And so I think that that's a very um, important space for us to think about is what are, what is the purpose behind our actions, right? What was I thinking? What was I feeling? How did I behave? And, you know, and then the why. So, so asking those tough questions, those tough questions can be interesting. They don't always have to come from you, but they can absolutely be interesting. So, um, awesome. So Tanya, you just joined us and I'm going to summarize this when I talk about the homework, but you literally just joined us right at the time that I'm getting ready to talk to you about my program before I open it up for Q and A and tell you what your homework is. So, um, I want to let y'all know that my program, excuse me, while I live intentionally is now officially open for enrollment. So if you are interested in learning more about this, this is for high performance entrepreneurs and executives that want to pivot from burnout, um, that are lacking clarity and direction, that feel stressed or have areas in their life that they feel like are suffering. And you want to be able to do um, more without, without sacrificing your income, or you might want to make more. So that is who this is for. It is going to launch on December 10th, but we are in the space right now of open enrollment. If you enroll before December 10th, you get 50% off of the um, cost of the program. So you can go ahead over to jicejohnson.com, set up a discovery call with me so we can determine if this is the right type of program for you, if this is a good fit for you, if I'm the right type of coach for you. Um, and this is an eight-week program. The first of the the um, this first go around right here that you're going to be getting into is live. And then we'll have ongoing weekly calls as well as quarterly masterminds that will be in person um, with some subject matter experts. So it's going to be a really great program. Um, the program is for eight weeks, but then the ongoing accountability and calls will be going on for the next year. So it's really designed to help you turn around and pivot from where you are to where you want to be, get you set on that right track. Um, so Make sure you head over to JiceJohnson.com to set up um, a discovery call with me. So now before I um, open up for q and I'm going to tell you about what your homework is. You got to pick one area to reflect or journal. You don't got to journal, but reflect or journal. So here's the, here's the four areas, okay? So we're talking about that space of introspection. One, it, one is where you have mismanaged yourself. So reflect or journal on a time that you have mismanaged yourself so you can go back and assess that time and ask yourself, what were you thinking? What were you feeling? What were you doing, right, in that time and why? The second thing is to get clear on your values. If you go and Google, like, values, there are all these different um there's like different activities that you can do to help you get clear on what your values are if you don't know. And so you can like narrow down, there's like list of values and you can narrow down and narrow down and narrow down until you have, I would, I would put out there like your top five to seven values that really encompass like things that are important to you that help you in your decision-making. So get clear on your values. Three would be one area in your life that's cloudy Spend some time getting clear. Spend some time getting clear. You ain't got to get clear on your whole life. But like one area that feels cloudy. What is my goal here? What do I want here? What does this feel like to me? If it's cloudy, spend time getting clear. Or one area that you need to grow in personal development. One area. It ain't got to be all of them because it's a lot. But we talked about that grit, discipline, creativity, communication, leadership, integrity, perseverance, accountability, willpower, emotional intelligence, self-control, accountability. What is like one area that you know is really suffering that you need to really work on your personal development? So you don't got to reflect on all four of them, but pick one. Pick an area that you're going to either reflect on or journal on that can help you begin the process of being intentional about introspection and self-awareness, all right? So I'm gonna open it up for any questions, comments, feedback. Anybody? Was I thorough? Oh. Um. Can I, so do you, and I guess we could talk about it when I, when I um, get back with you about this eight week, 
um, deal because you know I'm I'm doing one thing. I don't want to do too much, but we'll talk about that. We'll assess that and and get figured out if it's too much. If it's you know what I mean. If it's doable. Uh huh. You had a question though. No, that's it. That's the question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but so I'm, you want to dig in a little bit more when we um. Okay, so yeah, you got to schedule a yeah. call with me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. We'll get you on the books for sure. Thank you, ma'am. Awesome. Well, if there are no questions and there are no um, comments or further feedback, then I will give you back 30 minutes of your time this afternoon. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, y'all be sure to make sure to go to um, jaisjohnson.com, get signed up, and then be sure to join me next week. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you, Jay. I'll be, I'll be getting with you. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. All right.